If we're building MVVM applications in WPF, then we know that we can't get MVVM without view models. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In one of my previous videos, which I'll link up here so you can go check that out first, we were making a splash screen. And on that splash screen, we were supporting progress reporting. In that video, though, I was illustrating how we can get progress reporting working, but we kind of took a shortcut and we put a lot of that code in the code behind of the splash screen itself. Now, in this video, I want to transform that code. So we'll do a bit of refactoring and we're going to convert that over to being a view model. So this will be much closer to MVVM. And that way, our logic is not directly interacting with the UI controls because that's a big no no in WPF if you're trying to follow all the best practices. So if that sounds interesting, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's go check out our splash screen and start refactoring. So in the previous video, this is the very beautiful splash screen that we had. I won't spend much time looking at this so our eyes won't burn. But what we were looking at in the code behind here was this report method, and it took in a progress. So the splash screen interface itself is an eye progress, and that interface essentially is looking just like this single method here, and we're able to have a type parameter, which is what we define, so the, the progress object that we want to have. Now, we were required to have this dispatcher invoke because we were doing this from a background thread and then trying to set the properties on the controls directly. And this is a bit of a violation of MVVM because we're not really working with view models. The reporting was actually happening from the presenter that we made it and directly modifying the control or the window in this case. But we can do better than that. We can use a view model and set up bindings such that we can have those properties directly update and interact in our user interface without us having to go touch the user interface directly. So let's go check out how we can set up a view model for that. What I wanted to do is think about these two things that we're setting here. So we have the progress bar that has a value, and then we had this X block, which is the, the message that we want to have. And those are two fields that come off of this progress info that we pass in. So what I went ahead and did was made a splash view model it has I notify property changed on it. So we'll explain that in just a moment. It has I progress on it, which is what we were using up here, right? So it's going to be this method signature. And we'll see that coming up in just a second. But then what I wanted to do is with I notify property changed, we get this event here, which is property change, big surprise. And then we have to have two properties that map with these fields up here that support this property change type of interaction. So we essentially only notify the property change happening when the value is different. So that's down here. And basically Copilot's really good at this point now. It just knows how to implement it. So if I say, I don't even have to type anything. It just knows <laughs> that we need it. So that came right off of Copilot. Caller member name, if you see up here on property change, caller member name just allows the compiler to infer the calling location. So we don't have to go do something like this and then say progress value. We don't have to do this because caller member name takes care of that for us. But essentially, I set up these two properties that support notify property changed. And that means that we're able to bind to them. So we'll look at that in a moment. And then I put this report method in here. And that's because I progress splash screen progress here on this view model means that we need to have this implemented. So we get this method signature. And all that I'm doing is going to set the text and set the value for progress. That's it, right? It's really just this code up here, but then moved into here. Before we move on, this is just a quick reminder that I do have a course on C-sharp refactoring available on Dome Train. Refactoring is one of the most critical skills that you can learn as a software engineer, and this helps you continue to build upon applications that already exist, making sure that they can scale and have extensibility. I walk you through a bunch of various techniques and give you some examples that we walk through together to see how we can apply these techniques to refactor the code. Check out the pinned comment and the links in the description to get this course. Now back to the video. At this point, we've created this view model, which is cool. It's pretty simple. We've just copied basically the exact report method that we needed. And then from there, we're updating these properties. But now we have to go use it. And now we have to go bind to it as well. So we're not just done there. So I'm going to start showing you how I started to refactor some of the code to make this work. So this is net new code, this view model. But we have to go use it. So scrolling back up, if I take out this constructor on our splash window, if I bring in this other one that I had, this is the paradigm that I like to use. So I do use a lot of dependency injection 
even though WPF isn't super friendly with it, it kind of breaks some of the uh, design features. There's kind of hacks around this, but I use dependency injection an awful lot. So I'm injecting the view model. And then from there, I'm setting that on the data context as the very first thing, even before initialize component. And that way, in a lot of the controls that I create, they have a view model that exists for the exact lifetime of the control itself. So the splash window will get this view model. I'm going to take this part out because we don't need this reporting anymore. That means that we're going to have a problem with this interface up here. It's going to say, hey, like, look, we can't do that. We have to do better than that. And that's because we don't want iProgress on the interface for the view itself. By the way, you don't have to have an interface for your views. Again, this is coming from a previous video. I'm just showing you how I'm cleaning up some of the code to go make that better, right? So jumping back to here, we now have a window that will take in this view model that we've created, a very simple one, right? But it's going to have these properties that we can bind to, and it still has this reporting method. And that means that someone on the outside is able to have a reference to this view model and say, I would like to report progress. So view model, here's the progress. That view model goes, thank you very much. I'm going to go update my two properties. So these two right here. I'll go update those. And then we have a view that's also listening to this on the property changed event. And that's done through binding. With those things put together, that means that our splash screen presenter, I'm talking with my hands here. So my splash screen presenter is able to have a reference to this view model and say report progress. From there, report progress does the internal update. And then the view is watching that and then is able to get that update through the binding. If we put all that together, it should work. We haven't updated to call the view model and we still haven't done the binding. So if we go over to the splash presenter, what I want to do is clean up some of this code. And if we see in this callback that we had to have the background work get executed, we were giving it a progress reporter. But the problem is the splash window is no longer the progress reporter. So let's get rid of that. And I'm going to bring in this other code. And this is going to look a little bit nasty, but this is just because of how we've designed some of the other pieces in here in this presenter, which I can clean up. But this part, as you'll notice, this looks terrible. <laughs> it looks terrible because we're asking this window. So this is already a bit of a smell in here. We have access to the window directly. Then we're asking for the data context. This is one of the things that I really don't like about WPF is that this data context is sort of visible as an object to everyone. Now we happen to know that it's a splash view model. So one thing that we could do to make this slightly better, if you bear with me for just a moment, because I really don't like that casting, even though I set this up before I started recording, I'm like, no, I'm not happy with that. So let's go ahead. And this is a pattern that I like to do when I'm working with presenters. So I like to explicitly put in, if I have a splash view model like this, um, I actually would like to do, give me one moment here. Let's change this around. So I'd like to have something like this, and then I can do, I might even put, I don't use this syntax a lot, but sometimes to make this a little bit more readable, just because the capital letter here in the lowercase one, this might be kind of nice. I like to expose out the view model like this, a strongly typed view model, because we're already exposing the context. It's this, it's literally the same information, but it personally kind of bothers me that we just have this object type. So. If we go back to here, instead of doing this, now I can ask for the view model. And then we know if I hover over this with my cursor, we see splash view model as the type. That's exactly what we want to see here. So again, now that we have something that has progress reporting on it, we can go ahead and pass that into here and this will now compile. So all that this interface wanted, this do heavy work async callback needed a progress reporter that took in splash screen progress. And we're now providing that because our view model does that. Now we have the input going in to handle this, and that means that the caller inside of the do heavy work async callback can now report progress. That's great, but we're not doing anything with that yet. So if we were to go run this, it would be completely busted. The progress wouldn't update, and we'd be kind of upset. So what I'm going to do is now go to the binding part, which we have to go create. So if I go back to this very beautiful magenta splash screen, I'm going to take out this code here and I just have a copy of it below. All that I'm doing is updating it with the bindings. So I'll walk you through that. You can see that on the text block, I'm just binding to progress text. And that's because our view model has that property and the progress bar itself has progress value. I'm binding to both of these and that's sort of the missing link on the other end of this whole thing. 
At this point, what we've been able to do is take our Splash Presenter. It can properly take something that has iProgress Reporter, which is going to be the view model. It gives that to the thing doing the background work. And just to show you where that is in my example application, it's actually right here. So let me get rid of that code and you can see that it takes in this progress reporter and that way it can report on the progress right here. It's doing that work already great. Then our view model, like I showed you earlier, that's going to propagate those changes through and raise an event every time they change. And the final part we saw is that we have these bindings in place. So if we go run this, we should see a very beautiful magenta splash screen and our progress should be reporting just as we expected. And one last thing to show you, just to remind you, I did delete the progress reporting directly off of the splash window. So there's no other code lurking that would be doing this, just our happy path. And there we go, our very beautiful magenta splash screen. And as you saw, we ended up having all of that update for progress. So if I go ahead and run it one more time to show you, you can see that that progress is updating, right? The fact that we saw those controls update as it was going tells us that the binding is working. Now we've refactored this a little bit further. We've put a view model in place, which is great. We could see how the binding works, but there's still a couple of code smells with this splash presenter. And I like walking through this whole example because we can see we can start with some working code and we can start refactoring it to have the patterns that we want to propagate further. So the thing that I don't like about this presenter still is that it has reference to this whole splash window. Ideally, I would just like to have it work with the view model. So instead of splash window, I really just want to have splash view model. But where does that start to fall apart? If we have a quick scan closing so we don't have an event handler on there, that might be something we could do easily on the view model. But the other thing is that we have this show and close. So it seems to me like if we want to start replacing this whole view control in this presenter and just work with the view model, we probably have to come up with two workarounds for being able to show the window and close it. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.